In Monster Hunter World, there are many aspects to consider when taking on a hunt. The target, your weapon, these are all important, but hunters who want optimal performance need to consider the build they use by the weapons and armor they wear. I'm Darkblade, and here are even more builds that I use for the longsword. The skills that you can gain from armor and even some weapons can help shape your hunter into specialized hunting machines. With the longsword, the weapon shines with DPS builds. This is thanks to the Foresight Slash covering all the defensive aspects that a longsword user could desire. Foresight Slash being able to counter most attacks normally eliminates the need for defensive skills, allowing a hunter to focus on more offensive skills. And this is what is shown in the majority of the builds here. Now remember these builds in Season 2 are aimed at end game builds, so they will feature a lot of gamma pieces of armor and some of the rarest jewels there are. So the first build I use is the Elementalist DPS build version 2.0. This is a very strong DPS build, utilizing a weapon that has its element hidden, thus its class is a non-elemental weapon, and this is combined with all the offensive skills a hunter could desire. So for this build you need the Kaiser Crown Gamma, the Empress Mel Beta, the Kaiser Vampiresis Gamma, the Corv Taros Malice Gamma, and the Kaiser Greaves Gamma. I'm also using a Mighty Charm too, and for my weapon I'm using the Taros Sword Fire. This has a health regen augmentation on it. As for your jewels, the main mandatory one here is your Elementalist jewel to provide you with that non-elemental boost skill. Afterwards I've gone with attack jewels, four of them in fact, to get attack boost to level 4, tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit, a critical jewel to max out critical boost, and finally a flawless jewel to max out peak performance. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 815 attack, this attack rating will be even higher when you're in a hunt thanks to peak performance. White Sharpness, 55% affinity when you have maximum stamina, although this will be even higher when you go for monster weak points, guaranteeing you 100% affinity. No element, with a strong defense especially against fire and thunder, but you're fairly weak to water and ice. As for the skills, you'll have the following, Critical Eye level 7, Critical Eye basically buffs our affinity by a set percentage, Attack Boost level 4 increasing our attack, and once you get Attack Boost to level 4 it also grants you 5% extra affinity. Critical Boost level 3, increasing the damage of our critical hits. Weakness Exploit level 3, Weakness Exploit guarantees a percentage increase in affinity when you hit monster weak points. Peak Performance level 3, which increases our attack while our health is full. Maximum Might level 2, Maximum Might increases our affinity so long as we have maximum stamina. And Non-Elemental Boost level 1, which increases the attack of weapons who don't have any element or ailment, or if they do, they are hidden, as is the case with the Troth sword fire. You also have the set bonus Teostra's technique, Master's touch, preventing any sharpness loss when you crit a monster. And with this build having an exceedingly high affinity, you shouldn't see any sharpness loss whatsoever. So as you can see, this is a very strong DPS build, utilizing the majority of the skills you could want when it comes to damage. Now the Taroth Fire Sword can be replaced with the Divine Slasher if you so wish, but the Divine Slasher unfortunately does require a little bit of handicraft to get it to white sharpness. So you may have to replace the Mighty Charm with the Handicraft Charm, and instead of having a health regen augmentation on the Divine Slasher, you could go with an Infinity Increase. But regardless of if you're using the Divine Slasher, or as I've shown here, the Taroth Fire Sword, this build can easily cut through monsters. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Sha or Kuja Elemental DPS build. This build is very similar to the one just shown, but instead it utilizes Sha weapons found from Arch Tempered Corv Taroth. Now this build can work with any of them, whether they be Ailment or Elemental. But for the purpose of this video, I'll be showing off a Fire Elemental build. So for this build, you'll need the Kaiser Crown Gamma, the Corv Taroth's Aya Alpha, the Kaiser Vambrace's Gamma, the Corv Taroth's Malice Gamma, and the Kaiser Greaves Gamma. I'm also using a Blaze Charm 3, and for my weapon, I'm using the Shah Sword Fire with a health regen augmentation on it. As for your jewels, I've gone for Tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit, Flawless jewels to provide peak performance, a Blaze jewel to max out our fire rating, and a Steadfast jewel to max out stun resistance. Although this last one is purely optional. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 677 attack, which is actually higher if you have maximum health thanks to peak performance while on a hunt. White sharpness, 50% affinity, which is actually 100% so long as you go for monsters weak points. 510 fire rating with strong defense, especially against fire and thunder, but you're fairly weak to water and ice. 
You'll also have the following skills, critical eye level 7, fire attack level 4, boosting the fire rating of our weapon, stun resistance level 3, making us completely immune to being stunned, crit boost level 3, increasing our damage when we crit a monster. However, this won't actually affect the elemental portion of our attacks. It just affects the raw portion. But this combined with critical element, which increases our elemental damage when we crit a monster, these two combined make our critical hits very potent. Anyway, you also have weakness exploit level 3, peak performance level 3, as I said, critical element level 1, and you also have the Teostra's technique, master's touch, preventing sharpness loss when we crit a monster. So as you can see, this is a very strong build. Now, yes, I do understand that both peak performance and critical boost will not affect the elemental rating of this build whatsoever. However, it does affect the raw attack. So the raw attack being boosted thanks to critical boost and peak performance, alongside the increase in our elemental damage thanks to fire attack and critical element, means the two combined should allow you to bring down monsters fast. So long as you're taking their elemental or element weaknesses into account. You can, like I said, use whatever Shah weapon you want with this build, but if you do so, then you're going to have to swap out the Blaze Charm to match whatever element or element you are using, as well as the Blaze Jewel. The biggest downside about this build, as with the previous Elementalist build, is its survivability. But this shouldn't be an issue, so long as you can master the Foresight Slash, as this will allow you to counter even the strongest monster attacks. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Calamity build, version 2.0. The Reaver Calamity, which is the Devil Joe Longsword, is one of the strongest in the game. It also looks awesome, so I always try to make builds around it. This again is a DPS build, but adds a health regen element to it. The health regen isn't a natural health regen, it's a health regen for when we attack a monster. So, for this build you'll need the Kaiser Crown Gamma, the Nergigante Male Gamma, the Draken Vambraces Alpha, Nergigante Coil Gamma, and the Nergigante Greaves Gamma. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 3. For my weapon, I'm using the Reaver Calamity. This has an Affinity Increase Augmentation on it, and a Health Regen Augmentation on it. As for your jewels, I've gone for a mixed bag of DPS focused jewels here. So I've gone for Flawless Jewels to max out Peak Performance, Tenderizer Jewels to max out Weakness Exploit, Expert Jewels to max out Critical Eye, a Mighty Jewel to max out Maximum Might, and finally a Sharp Jewel to provide us with that Protective Polish skill. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 Health, 100 Stamina, 888 Attack, which is higher when Peak Performance is activated, White Sharpness, 50% affinity so long as you have maximum stamina, this will actually be 100% so long as you go for monster weak points too, 210 dragon rating with high elder seal, and you'll have a moderate defense especially when it comes to fire but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for the skills you have critical eye level 7, attack boost level 4, weakness exploit level 3, handicraft level 3 increasing the sharpness of our weapon to a decent chunk of white sharpness, peak performance level 3, maximum might level 3, agitator level 1, a byproduct of the gear we are wearing but nonetheless when a monster becomes enraged and this activates it gives us a little bit of extra attack and affinity and you'll also have protective polish level 1. Protective polish allows you to put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge when you sharpen your weapon, preventing any sharpness loss for a small period of time. You'll also have the set bonuses Nergigante's Hunger, Haste and Recovery, allowing us to recover health when we attack a monster. This combined with the health regen augmentation normally means that we're able to allow for a moderate amount of health regen when we attack. It's not the best health regen in the world, but for this build I am trying to combine DPS with a little bit of health regen. The health regen is nice, especially as we do have peak performance, and being able to get our health back without having to stop, sheave and heal manually is always nice. The biggest difference between this Calamity version 2 build and the original Calamity build is it lacks Master's Touch. But the original build didn't have peak performance or the health regen aspects. But regardless of if you like the original build or this new one, both can rip through monsters quickly, especially if they're weak to the dragon element. Anyway, let's move on to our fourth and final build, which is the defensive build. This build focuses on high amounts of health and health regen. So for this build, I'm using the Nergigante Helm Beta, the Valhazak Mel Gamma, the Nergigante Vambraces Gamma, the Valhazak Coil Gamma and the Valhazak Greaves Gamma. I'm also using an Exploited Charm 2 and for my weapon I'm using the Empress Sword of Ruin with a Health Regen augmentation attached to it. As for your jewels, I've gone for a mix of Health Focused Jewels and DPS Jewels. I've added Attack Jewels to get our Attack Boost to level 4, Vitality Jewels to boost our Health Boost to level 3, a Medicine Jewel to add some recovery up, I would have liked to add more but unfortunately we've run out of room, a Maximum Might Jewel, 
a sharp jaw to provide us with that protective polish skill, a tenderizer jaw to max out weakness exploit, and this will leave you with a few sockets left. I put two destroyer jewels in to max out the part breaker skill. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina. This will actually be 200 health once you've taken all your consumables on a hunt. 716 attack. Again, this will be higher with peak performance while on a hunt. We have white sharpness, 35% affinity, which is actually 85 so long as you're going for monsters weak points and have maximum stamina. 150 blast rating with a strong defense, especially against water, but you're fairly weak to fire and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have attack boost level 4, health boost level 3, increasing our maximum health to a possible 200, recovery speed level 3, which increases the rate our health regens naturally. Normally this would only be for the red portion of health on your health bar, but with the Vile Hasak set bonus, which we'll talk about in a bit, this means that it will affect the entire health bar. You'll have weakness exploit level 3, part breaker level 3, which makes it easier to break monster parts, peak performance level 3, maximum might level 3, recovery up level 2, recovery up increases the effectiveness of our healing capabilities by a set percentage. Dragon attack level 1, a byproduct of the gear unfortunately, it's not useful on this build whatsoever. Protected polish level 1, and you'll have hasten recovery level 1. Hasten recovery is the Nurgagante set bonus built into the Emperor's Sword Ruin, allowing us to regen our health when we hit a monster. This is separate from the health regen augmentation. And finally, for the set bonuses, you'll have Valhasak's Vitality Super Recovery, allowing for our health bar to regenerate past the red portion of health which provides us constant healing over time. So there we have it. This is a little bit of amalgamation between having higher health, health regen and DPS. The health regen augmentation, health recovery and super recovery normally allow a hunter to continue a fight without having to actually stop and drink a potion. Whilst this build may not have some of the high DPS potential as the other builds, it's still nonetheless very potent. Thanks to maximum might, weakness exploit and especially peak performance, this build can still hit hard. Also, with this build's high health regen, peak performance should be active most of the time. Now, of course, you can change some of the jewels if you so desire. For example, the part breaker jewels can be swapped out. You could max out recovery up by adding a medicine jewel if you so desire, or whatever else takes your fancy. But regardless, this is one of my personal favorite builds for the longsword, because not only is it functional and can bring down monsters fairly quickly, but I also love the way it looks. So there we have it. Those are more builds that I like to use for the longsword. Of course, Monster Hunter World is always being updated with new monsters and gear, especially with Iceborne on the horizon, which could potentially cause these builds to change and become even stronger. So when major updates happen, I'll be sure to release an updated video. Remember also that almost any task in Monster Hunter World can be taken on with any weapon or gear set. You don't have to use what is shown in these videos. These are just the sets that I personally like to use. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Dyerblade, bringing you more builds that I like to use for the longsword in Monster Hunter World. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.